This is your Barbados Today morning news update for Monday, February 21st. Good morning. The Barbados Nurses Association says government's decision to pay student nurses a stipend nearly eight years after its secession is a boost for the training and development for healthcare workers. BNA President Valerie Francis Miller says they have been lobbying for the restoration of the payment for a long time and it's a step in the right direction. The Barbados Nurses Association welcomes the recent announcement made by the Minister of Health and Wellness, the Honorable Ian Gunning Edgel, about the reinstatement of the student nurses stipend. BNA has been advocating for the return of this stipend from the time of its suspension. It has been a long process to get to this point. However, we see it as a turning point for training and education of nurses in Barbados. We therefore echo the minister's sentiments about this action, helping to reduce the nursing shortage across the health care sector of Barbados. Health Minister Ian Gooden Agile, who announced the move, said 273 student nurses will benefit and it will cost the government approximately $2 million per year. This move will benefit 273 student nurses to the tune of approximately $2 million per year. This change in policy is expected to give added incentive to Barbadians to join the nursing profession and help to reduce the current nursing shortage. In addition, government has set out clear criteria by which student nurses will qualify for the payment of the financial stipend. The reintroduction of the stipend will make it possible for students not having to work and study at the same time while providing some compensation to students for the services provided to healthcare facilities as a component of their clinical training. 188 dogs have been shipped to Canada to find new homes. Yesterday, the Ocean's Acres Animal Sanctuary and other local sanctuaries facilitated the refugee project. Speaking with members of the media, Ocean Acres founder Karen Whitaker said the high number of dogs being abandoned, especially during the pandemic, is still a cause for concern. So we don't do this just for fun or to please people in Canada who want our dogs. We do this because we absolutely have to because we're stuck. We've been so pushed for the last few months with so many dogs and having to have too many dogs together, which is dangerous, they could fight. Um, and that is so stressful for us because obviously we do this because we care about the dogs. We don't want to put them in a position where they're in danger. And we find ourselves almost doing that because we don't have space. So that's why we have to do this because we have nowhere else to go. There's just not enough homes. I remember you said at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people were abandoning their dogs and so on. Is that still the current state of play? What was it like now with people and dogs? Yeah, I mean, like, people do still seem to abandon their dogs and we would really like that to change. Improve access for the disabled and other vulnerable groups is a top priority for St. James North Member of Parliament, Edwin Hinkson. Hinkson, who will chair a commission that will seek to improve living conditions for the vulnerable, says he's committed to expanding services for the two groups. He was speaking during a Thanksgiving service at the Garden Church of God on Sunday. Hinkson says he hopes to introduce some of the much-needed changes in order to assist these persons in raising their standard of living. People with disabilities, it is well known, I love why that, um, that is one of my main policy areas and uh, I look forward to being involved again or continuing to be involved rather as I have been for over 30 years in advancing the cause of people with disabilities. Her Excellency, the then Governor General, of course, no President of our Republic, would have named me as Chairman of her to be established Disabilities Commission in her funeral speech in September 2020, the Prime Minister last month, um, at the swearing in of Members of Parliament and Senators would have again named me as such. I've been in discussions last week with the Minister for People and Parliament on, on how we, we could possibly propose for that commission to be established and for work to go forward on trying to enshrine and legislate rights for people with disabilities in this country. 
In other news this Monday, 41 new soldiers recruited into the Barbados Defense Force are being urged to serve their office and country with integrity. Delivering the feature address at the St. Anne's Fort for the BDF passing out parade for the recruit intake number one, Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs Dale Marshall told the BDF recruits to lead by example. The military is a place of high standards and the Defense Force will be judged based on how you carry yourselves outside of the walls of the barracks. You'll be judged on your standard of dress. You'll be judged on your conduct on the streets. And if ethics and morals in the Barbados Defense Force are to mean anything, it must mean that you recruits try honestly and earnestly to determine the right course of action and then follow it. It means doing the right thing at all times, even when others try to influence you in doing otherwise. In seeking to keep our ethical and moral compass on the right and good bearings, I encourage all of you to examine the ethical and moral parameters that are prevalent and that are the standard bearers of the Defense Force. Consider, first of all, whether the action you take is right or wrong, honorable, disgraceful, good, or bad. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, 190 persons tested positive for the viral illness from the 1,050 tests conducted by the Besto Santos Public Health Laboratory on Saturday. Of those 190 persons, 103 were males and 87 were females. From the new cases, 40 persons were under the age of 18 and 150 were 18 years and older. There were 100 people in isolation facilities and 3,420 in home isolation. Two Barbadian males, a 69-year-old vaccinated man and an 84-year-old unvaccinated man, succumbed to the viral illness on Saturday, bringing the total number of COVID-19 deaths to 310. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends I take care of my 80-year-old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mum and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional happenings in Trinidad and Tobago, government's vaccine deadline for our public sector workers has again been pushed back. Attorney General Farouz Alwari could not give a timeline as to when it would be implemented. We get the details from TTT News. Speaking to reporters on Friday, Mr. Alrawi said the legislation has not yet been approved by cabinet. Legislation were being ironed out at the office of the Attorney General because of very important submissions that we received from a number of sectors, including the trade unions and the private sector. Some of those issues included liability, which the state is minded to accept, um, included how are we going to treat with people who are constitutionally protected in terms of terms and conditions. The Attorney General said on the Prime Minister's return from Qatar, decisions would be made in collaboration with medical experts for the way forward, following which it would be debated in the Parliament. On the international front, Russia will extend military drills in Belarus that were due to end on Sunday. The Belarus Defense Ministry said in a step that would make U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Belkin said he is more worried about the imminent Russian invasion of Ukraine. We get more in this report from Reuters TV. Russia will continue military drills with Belarus, which were set to end Sunday, extending Russian troop maneuvers that have sparked alarm that Moscow could be preparing to invade Ukraine. 
The announcement from the Belarusian Defense Ministry signals Moscow is not ready to demobilize a massive military buildup that has stoked fears it might attack. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said continued drills make him worried about an imminent Russian invasion of Ukraine. Further ratcheting tensions, shelling across the line dividing Ukrainian forces and Russian-backed separatists in Donbass increased sharply last week and continued on Sunday. Last week, the U.S. warned Moscow might use the renewed unrest as a pretext to attack. Russia has repeatedly denied such plans. Russian President Vladimir Putin and French President Emmanuel Macron agreed in a phone call on the need for a diplomatic solution to the crisis. A French presidential advisor said officials from Ukraine, Russia and the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe are expected to meet Monday. That's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.